As dignitaries gather for this last ride for James J. Beck, it seems only fitting to recount his enormous accomplishments. Born in poverty when this country was struggling for its economic life, he rose in six decades to such an awesome position of wealth and power that one can only marvel at the feat. How did he do it? How did the son of a Kansas tractor salesman become one of the richest men in the world? Well, for that part of the story, we go to Jerry Dumphy in New York. Thank you, Keith. America is a nation with a dream. And James J. Beck was the leading salesman of that dream. A man with no formal education, a high school dropout. You a man who days, this guy dropped out of high school. Boy, and went every day to the public library and read every book from soil cultivation to nuclear physics. You hear that, Tony? The guy had a job and he went to the library. Legends are made, and James J. Beck is a legend. The legend started in Kansas in 1920 on property very much like this. <laughs> a 22-year-old drugstore employee took his dead father's life insurance money, a meager 3,000 Hey, cash. bring me some of that uh, coffee, I wonder though. if uh, some of you can hold it down a little bit because some others are trying coffee, to watch this thing, okay? Hey, just eat your burger, huh? Street paradise. The guy's gonna be in there forever. Mr. Dunn wants us to go down smooth. Got the gas? I've always wanted a gas a bit. Okay, I want to thank the room for being real, hey, yeah, social-minded, and real understanding. Bye. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Oh, all right, what do we got here, boys? Uh, we're canvassing the area this morning, and we've got a petition here to increase the wages of federal employees. Parking lots to canvassing? Need all the signatures we can get, sir. Federal employee salaries. Oh, well, I'm a federal employee. My salary stinks. <laughs> Somebody ought to do something. Uh, you got a lot of fine print here. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks okay. I'll sign that. Let's see. Ah! God. Mr. Heath, please, if you don't mind, just for a moment. <clears throat> I'm here with Jordan Heath, who is president of Beck Industries. Mr. Heath, tell us, what's in the future for Beck Industries? Well, the, the company will miss the insightful leadership that Jim provided. But we know that the 10-year plan set up by J.J. Beck before he died will continue to carry us forward. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. We've been talking to there Jordan Heath, President and Chief Operating Officer. No money? No connections? No education? Come on, Tony. The guy went to the library every day and read a book for his entire life. Hey, Tony averages a book a day. Book of matches. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, for sure. And he goes to the library all the time, too, right? It's like the best place in town to steal bicycles. Oh, come on, these are just jokes, Mr. H. Don't take this too serious. I'll try not to, Tony. You see, what I'm interested in here is this missing will. I mean, a guy like Beck dies, and nobody knows who gets what. Now, what is that? Well, the man's an eccentric. Yeah, but not to leave a will? I mean, I, I don't understand it. With billions of dollars at stake, and the guy doesn't leave a will. Well, maybe he did. I mean, we don't know, Ron. Facts haven't all been tabulated yet. We'll probably be learning new things for weeks. Have a good day, everybody. Tony, you got a minute? Uh, six math papers behind, guy. Just six already? Yep, I'd send a note home to your uncle, but he doesn't seem to read them. Yeah, well, you know, my uncle is pretty hard to read through the bottom of your bottle. Well, listen, if you flunk, you're not going to graduate next year. Hey, Beck didn't graduate. Come on, Tony. I'm trying to show you that a, a guy can make it to the top from anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I get you, Drew. Hey, listen. Uh, why don't you meet me in my house in about an hour, and I'll run over some of the algebra with you. Oh, gee, Mr. Rates, I'd love to, but uh, i got to go to my job at the drugstore. I'm saving up to buy a wheat field. I'll flunk you, Tony. And all your friends are going to pass you right on by. It's blackmail. That's life. See you in an hour. Let's take it. All right. We're with the teachers' union. And we'd like you to sign this petition. All right. Get a pen? I sure have. Ah! Take these keys to the spare tire well in the back.
this thing, Mr. Dunn. You got Hinckley? Yeah, he's in the back seat. We'll get them both in that car. Then wait here. I'll drive it in. So the funeral is over. The casket has been lowered into the ground, and the last rites have been said over James J. Beck. <laughs> this is Keith Ashman once again at the gravesite of J.J. Beck, where the mourners are filing out slowly now, each pondering the future of Beck Industries, the industrial giant that was J.J. Beck. Friends and relatives, business associates alike, all come with names and paid respects. You have to say again, J.J. Beck was perhaps the most controversial in the <laughs> been accomplished. A long journey, Marshal. Made a couple of wrong turns, I think. There are still unanswered questions. The missing will, the vast assets, the struggle for power and control of the biggest corporate structure in America. One can only guess at how it all will end. You're alive. Mr. Beck, I don't understand why you were alive. It's a long story. Like most long stories, it's complicated and full of intrigue. Uh, that's uh, for a costume party. You see, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, and we're having a dance at school, and I got that from United Costume Rentals. Welcome. <coughs> He's a school teacher, just like he said. Over the last six months, I've read several accounts of Agent Maxwell's arrest. Well, Mr. Maxwell is a remarkable agent with a uh, resourceful instincts. Agent William Maxwell is a very average, middle-level federal agent with a record of mediocre service. Hard-headed, uninspired, in short, a drone with a limited performance record for 30 years. Well, I think that's a kind of a narrow, limited view of it, if you don't mind my saying so, sir. You two were in some secluded spot. You were approached by an alien spacecraft, given this suit. It has superpowers. You've been working as a team, fighting evil influences in this hemisphere. I don't know what they're putting in your uh, air bottle there, Mr. Beck, but uh, you're beginning to sound like the after-dinner speaker at Bellevue. <laughs> I need your help. And if I don't get it, I'll expose you to the world. Uh, how many other people know about this, sir? Only Marshall and myself. The men outside were hired by Marshall. They know nothing. Jordan Heath and my top officers, you see, were... They were feeding Mr. Beck food that had no nutritional value. It started to fade away, develop pleurisy. Finally, we were able to fly down Dr. David Springfield, who was his personal physician for, well, almost the last 40 years. Drew up a will, had it notarized, and Dr. Springfield pronounced him dead so that we could get him out of that room. We crashed the plane that was carrying his body back home, supposedly. The uh, body we buried this afternoon was that of an indigent who was burned beyond recognition in a skid row fire. We only have a few months left to live. The Dr. Springfield was uh, chosen to take the will to the federal government. Left a couple of days ago. Never did arrive at his destination. Uh-huh. Killed. Uh, uh, Bushwhack dead, right? Of course not. How could you be so stupid? I, I'm becoming very disappointed in you, Mr. Maxwell. Well, you haven't seen me do my card trick yet. Dr. Springfield is selling you out, isn't he? He took the will and he's selling it to Jordan Heath for money. Yeah, that was my backup theory, too. Show him the doctor's picture. He's in Las Vegas now. He's being paid across the roulette table in the hotel we own there. I need you in this suit to stop the payoff and recover the will. Why should we help you, Mr. Beck? Because I left the entire proceeds of my fortune to charity. Why don't you just write in a will? I'd have to surface to admit this deception and die in a glare of publicity. I want these last months to pass in private. I need your help. Marshal here is too old, and I can't trust anybody else. I've researched you two. I don't think you would have been given this suit unless you could be trusted. It's a gamble, I know, but then I'm 
used to taking chances. Now, will you help me? You know, it's a, a chance to make a big difference. I mean, think of all the poor that it would help. Well, come on, Ralph. Let's not get all misty here. Because in his whole life, Mr. Beck never fed so much as a parking meter. I'm dying, Mr. Maxwell. There comes a time, you know, when you start thinking about what you are, and how you behaved, and how you'll account for those things in the world beyond. If you get the will back, you'll read it. You'll see that I'm telling you the truth. And then, when you're convinced, you'll give it over to the authorities. Bill. It's a chance to do something. A chance to make a huge difference. I'm thinking. Weighing it in my mediocre, uninspired, middle-level mind. Where does it get off? Oh, my career mediocre. Next to his, everybody's career is mediocre. Well, what is so hot about his career? I mean, anybody can make money. That's easy. I can't believe I met J.J. Beck. You should have had my section leader in Detroit. His career would have looked pretty crummy, too. I will be in Las Vegas in a few minutes. I can't be seen with you. You go to the Desert Air Hotel. That's the one that the Beck Industries own. That's where uh, Jordan and his associates, all of his executives, head were. Now, use a suit to start winning. Don't have much time. OK, come on. You don't tell us what to do. I run the field operation, and I run the kit. Excuse me, but uh, I run the kit. OK, go on. Mr. Maxwell, you're a very shrewd and dedicated federal agent. Now, I apologize for Mr. Beck's brusque way doesn't spare people's feelings. We have great respect for you and your position. We are in your debt. Well, look, pal, uh, he said it, I heard it, and I don't need a rub down from the team doctor. Um, excuse me, Mr. Dunn, but how do I clean out the bank? You use the telekinesis powers of the suit to control physical matter. Yeah, sure, that's the way you do it, Ralph. Excuse me, but uh, I don't uh, follow. How do I, uh, how do I do that? You make your mind a blank. Push hard. Please don't pretend ignorance. I thought you were going to try and be helpful. A lot is at stake. I'm telling you, these guys make me nervous. Ralph? I did it. I did it. I moved it. All I have to do is I make my mind perfectly blank and I, and, I, and I push. I don't think of anything. I just leave it open. It's kind of a vagueness. It was a terrific trick, kid. Why don't you try it again? Drop a plate of eggs on my lap. Better yet, a Mexican dinner or something. And then I you want to see me do it again, Bill? Watch this. I'll bring this magazine right over to you. Now, don't move. Ralph, would you knock it off? I'm sorry, Bill, it's kind of got to pull to the left, but I'll work on it. I'm starting to lose my middle-level temper here, Ralph. Bill. Bill. How did he know that? I'm just trying to show you why Beck has got this unnatural opinion of my abilities, that's all. In Phoenix, for example, I had this terrible district chief, Keel Klein, first in line Klein, we used to call him, because he always stole everybody's collars. Now, you're not going to be able to get very much career traction when your supervisor is stealing your, 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 your busts. So, that's no. what happened. You know, I've never been to Vegas. This is kind of exciting. Yeah, as long as you dress right. You know, conservative, not too garish. Driver, uh, Desert Air Hotel. So, uh, Bill, how long you had that uh, coat, huh? Oh, uh, this old rag? Well, I, uh, you like it? Well, it's, it's different, yeah. Yeah, well, I just pulled us out of the old Foot Locker, that's all. You did, huh? Here, set. Nice tag. Oh. <laughs> well, imagine that, after all those times through the dry cleaner and everything. Anyhow, uh, with this new power of yours... Yeah, with this new power, I ought to be able to clean up in a matter of no time. Power? System. We're system betters. You want to keep your nose on the yellow line, pal? You're paying the meters. We can meters. have this uh, conversation without you. Wait a minute, Bill. I'm getting something. 
Huh? Yeah, some guys are after Dunn. You see it? I see that. Billy's running back to the plane. Go, go! They got him, Bill, they got him. They're putting him into the back of a station wagon. Out. I'm not driving no crazies. Get out. <laughs> Ralph, 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 there's a public street. There's a bush. Come on. You guys should get helmets. Hurry up, Ralph. You've got to get back to that airport. This is Global American Airlines Flight 505 coming in for a final approach. Las Vegas Terminal. Are we clear to land? Stand by, Global American. Global American, 505. We got a UFO coming into grid 16. Oh. Two guys in painted shirts. Take gun away from me. That's unreal. Bill, I almost went in the intake of a 747. What are you talking I'm about? I'm not interested in creative excuses. You're starting to sound like Carlisle. The only thing you've been interested in lately since Beck stepped on your ego is grousing about your old bosses. When you stop yakking at me, I'm getting a headache. I have migraine. I haven't had one since Korea. I almost go through a 20-ton Cuisinart, and you've got a migraine headache. There it is. That's the one there. And that looks like Dr. Springfield. No bets are down. 20,000 down on 36. See if you can put a jinx on the wheel. Try not to knock everybody's drink in the lap. Keep my mind blank and push. Blank and push. Mind is blank. It is blank. Hi. Right. 36 red. Winner. Great. That's really great work, Ralph. What? Will you stop fooling around? My senses are being accosted here, Bill. Would you give me a break? It's not easy to concentrate. Come on, let's get a little closer. Oh, no. I don't believe it. Well, well, look who's here. Buster Billy. Who let you out? Who is he? Who are you? Name him Matthews. See all them little holes on his face, Ralph? He got those trying to learn how to eat with a fork. Your clock just ran out, Maxwell. I don't know who you are, but stay away from him. He's about to do a jackknife into a coffin. Colorful. Real colorful. Gee! Who's sitting on that parole board? I had that guy up on a real good, solid, second-degree murder beef. Got interesting friends, bro. Well, he's a wind machine. Forget him. Now, look, you gotta... You gotta concentrate and make your mind a total blank. Well, in this place, it's not real easy, you know what I mean? Well, uh, think of a piece of white paper, something like that. White paper, that's a good idea. White paper. I didn't mean to do well, it. Look what you did. Well, I didn't mean to do it. Yeah, but, um, listen, this is not the right time, but I got a couple of weeks off in August. You know, we might think about coming back up here. We could, uh, well, you know. Use the suit for, uh, personal gains, Bill, huh? Roll some dice, uh, hit a couple of jackpots? Well, uh, well, no, no. I mean, we could also, you know, we could have enough so that we could have our own, you know, crime fighting, uh, All center. Down. Yeah. Will it have a pool and a furnished cabana? Come on, Ralph, give me a break. Boy, oh boy, Bill. You know, this is exactly Balls what J.J. Clock. Beck was talking about. We are so easily are corrupted. We have to stay away from that kind of temptation, Bill. Now, how much money do you have? <sighs> boy. Come here, don't count. Just give me that. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, uh, everything on double zero. I'm betting 36 again. The all bets are down. 
All right. Now, don't think about the glitter. Don't think about the bangs. Make your mind a complete blank. Forget everything. Don't look at anything from the jiggles. Would you shut up? 36, red winner. I was pretty dumb, I guess. Oh, you dumb, Bill? Dumb? No. Well, I said I was sorry. Now, if you can't muster up a little concentration, I don't know what to tell you. Muster up some concentration, Bill? What are you talking about? You stand there right next to me and, and you list them. Distractions. Then you tell me to, to rip off the casino with my with my suit and you're flicking insults at Godzilla? How am I supposed to keep my mind blank, Bill? Come on, let me have the rest of what you got. Yeah. Down to nickels and dimes. Here. What is this, 12.50? You gotta be kidding, 12.50. I have a middle-level income to match my middle-level, mediocre career, okay? You stay here, all right? I'll tend to the table. Let me have uh, 12.50 on two zeros, please. $12.50, sir. Double zero. White paper, white paper. I'm very, very... White paper, white paper. White paper, white paper. Very, very white paper. Double zero. Another winner, double zero. All right! I won. I won. You lose. I win. <laughs> All right. I won. I won. Thank you. Put it right there, please. I'm getting the hang of this. Uh... Wait. OK. Let me try it. Yeah. I got the hang of this now. This is for and let me talk to Heath. Let me have this on double zero, too, please. You're bad luck for me, mister. Why don't you try another table? I like this table. Double zero, please. Paper. Yeah, we uh, may have a guy with a magnet on roulette table number one. That's the table where we're paying off Springfield, right? You sure he's using a magnet? Knock Dr. Springfield for 10000 I want that payoff completed in the next half hour. Take the limit off that table. I'm getting spooked about this deal. Too many old Beck employees are showing up. Is your best blonde kid on table one? No. Just get rid of him. Throw him out. I don't need the sheriff in here while we're doing this. Right. <laughs> well, a uh, little thin today, boys, but uh, put those two down on a cum line, please. Maxwell, yeah. I got a good odds on bed for you. You're six to five, you don't leave here with your pump running. Well, Jelly, that's a real exciting project. Who you got working it for you? Well, not that I can't do it myself, but just in case, I got the solo that class of 80 with me. Oh, well, they must really have a revolving door in that joint. Ah. Uh, Oh, Mitchell, Travelina, Bat Jack Brothers, that's great. Well, boys, I tell you what, um, I'm going to uh, ignore the fact that you're all in violation of parole just being in the state. What I want is for you to go out the front door. Now, real nice, if you do that, I'm going to forgive you this one time. <laughs> Take him, will you? What? Wait a minute. Excuse me, sir. Could you come with us, please? How come? Just come with us. Well, I'm all right, so I'm just playing here like everybody else, that's all. Sure. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bill! Bill! I'm gonna make this easy on you, kid. We know you're playing with electronic equipment. You get one strike around here for free. You had yours. What about my money? You guys have my winnings, you know. We got a saying in this town, cheaters never prosper. It's old, but we like it. Bye-bye. Well, wait a minute. Hey, you guys. Um, you know what? Okay, Maxwell, we're going for a little ride. We got that hole ready out in the desert, but nobody had time to scare up a plant box. Hi. Uh, these are mine. Uh, lucky undies.
guys really come prepared. I hope somebody brought the devil egg. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have this hamburger. Welcome to Food Hill. Come on. White paper. Now. White paper, white paper. A tasty treat! Four of them, Bill. Do you have any friends in this town? Uh, have you, Ralph? Come back here, Max! And uh, maybe the highway patrol, I hope. Okay, it's all here. When do you deliver J.J.'s will? I'm not stupid enough to have it here in Vegas. I'll mail it to you when I feel I'm safe. Now, don't worry, Jordan. $10 million will last me the rest of my life. I'm not gonna go through something like this again. You'll get the will. I'd like you to walk me to the parking lot. Just as a precaution. What's that? The will. Uh, sir? Sir? <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't say it, all right? I don't have to say it. That's the fifth car, Ralph. This is not working. You're gonna have to fly out of here, because if you don't stop Springfield from selling that will, it's all gone for nothing. Give me the sending unit. All right, Bill, I'll fly. I hate it, but I guess there's no other way. No one's gonna stop for a hitchhiker walking down the highway in his underwear. Springfield's probably out of town by now. Okay, now, go ahead. He's dead. I don't really give a damn about any of that. I think you've been lying to us, mister. Come on, Bill. You don't have to talk to him in that tone of voice. Maybe you could try to get a grip on yourself, Mr. Maxwell. Oh, is that right? Well, I'll tell you. You may have been J.J. Beck to the rest of the world, but you were as crooked as a dog's hind leg, and I think you still are. Who are you, really, Mr. Beck? How did you know about that spaceship? How did Mr. Dunn know about telekinesis? He told me how to do it. It's in your instruction book. What? How do you know about the book? Did you ever wonder how J.J. Beck made his fortune, huh? A high school dropout who bought a wheat field in Kansas? I just love flying aviation. Yeah. I had this dream we could bring civilization into a new era, but <laughs> I was wrong. The speed comes hazards. Our country, our, our world is careening down a pipe out of control. We're heading for oblivion. Yeah, well, we can get all that on sermonette. You had a suit like mine, didn't you? What? Didn't you? 
That spaceship approached you out in the desert and gave you a suit. And Marshal Dunn was your partner, much the same as Bill is mine. I used the power badly. I became greedy. Oh, I convinced myself it was for the good of man, but really it was just for the good of J.J. Beck. Marshal, he left me in disgust 20 years ago. By then, you know, I became bitter, aggressive, bent on destroying anyone that stood in my way. You know, I've been thinking a lot about that, Mr. Beck. You know, hundreds of years ago, Lord Acton said something. He said, power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. I try to fight it, I try. God, I try, but I want it so much. And all this stuff about, about the will, giving it to charity, is that the payback? Let me paint you a picture, Ralph. Mr. Beck here he is online. The final countdown. A few more months. And uh, he's going to be, he's going to be wandering around up there, looking for a harp and a fluffy white cloud. He's trying to buy himself a good seat on the ark. You have a unique talent for bluntness, Mr. Maxwell. Well, sir, uh, that used to be your trademark. <laughs> I bought out Harlan. Air Corporation in 1935, Sydney Harland designed that radial engine airplane. Oh, I did everything to destroy him and his subsidiaries. And then I put on my suit. Suit much like yours, but different in many ways. I became invisible and I went to his house. I just wanted to see how badly I had him cornered. <laughs> I snuck up the stairs. I stood there in his room. And I watched everything he loved I'd taken away from him. His wife was leaving. I stood behind him, invisible, and watched through the window as she drove away. Oh, I, I felt bad when I left, sure. But I won. I won my airplane. <laughs> I was outside the house. When I heard the shot. It wasn't worth it, was it, Mr. Beck? All the money and all the power, and you're still unhappy. Well, sometimes you have to look back, you know, to understand where you were and what you did. Look at me, Ralph. It's your chance to look forward. Remember what you see. We'll help you, Mr. Beck. We'll help. Lord Acton sure knew what he was saying. <laughs> I wonder if he, if he had a suit, too. I wonder how long you, too, can hold out. I would wonder. <laughs> I just wonder. Sir, this is uh, probably a kook, but there's a guy on the private line who says he's J.J. Beck. You know his voice? Is it him? Well, sir, that's a point. I think so. Much weaker, but, uh, yeah, I think it's him. He wants to talk to you. Who is this, please? J.J. Beck from the grave. Rich Little does impressions. I like a joke. Take it to the main room. The will. You went to a lot of trouble to get that will from Dr. Springfield, didn't you? Only I'm going to court tomorrow and write a new one. And this one's going on public record. I still don't believe I'm talking to Jim Beck. Polo Lounge, Los Angeles, 1968. You cleaned out Robert Price for me, 16 cents on the dollar. Huh? We put that one over on the government pretty good, didn't we? You and me and Marshall were the only ones who knew. And you want more now? Welcome back, J.J. Unfortunately, I've got control. Well, I can fix that. I've also got Marshall Dunn. He could fall down in traffic. I also know how much you hate the bright lights, J.J. Sounds to me like we have the makings of a nice negotiation. Yeah. 
trouble is, how do we survive this thing? You remember Phyllis Sanderson's property east of here? Yeah. It's got a nice landing strip and uh, surveillance from a distance, remember? Uh, you want to say in an hour or so and bring Marshall? Be sure he's pretty healthy, would you? Of course, neither of us is going to be alone, you know. I got to take care of this. Here, I'm giving you this envelope, Mr. Hinckley. In case it doesn't work out, you see that it's executed. You're the only one I'm sure is going to walk away. We'll take the chopper on the roof. Bring a guy with a rifle and a night scope. To you, Mr. Beck. You're a tough customer. Doesn't make any difference what you say about me. I gotta respect the tough guy. He handled that negotiation like a pro. I was wrong about you, Maxwell. I think you're a real pro. Thank you, sir. Now, this is strange for me. Marshall and I, we we had such plans. We, we were gonna do so much, and it just just went astray. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. You know, Ralph, it was starting to happen to us. It really was. I could feel it. Money and the power and a, our own private crime center with pool. Mr. Beck, mm. uh, you see, Bill and I don't have the instruction book. You yeah. We lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were hoping that you could help explain how the suit worked. Not having that instruction book might be your salvation, Ralph. It could minimize your power. Keep you on the defensive. Huh. You know, I never thought about it like that. You know, maybe he's right, Bill. Are you kidding? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Look, Mr. Beck, uh, Ralph and I are floating around, and it's fruit salad. We're lost. I, we can't do anything right. And don't give me that Lord Asher's theory, either. Acton. Some 16th century bozo with puffed out pants is not the answer here. Sir, we need that book. Oh, it doesn't matter. They took my suit away 20 years ago along with the book. I done enough damage on my own. Don't worry, Ralph. You'll work out your problems with the suit. Only I hope and I pray you do better than I. Okay. There they are. Get your chair, sir. No. I'm gonna have this beaten on my feet. Stay here. They won't try anything until they know what they are, sir. You're through calling the shots here. I'm going with you, and Ralph's gonna fly high cover. Good luck, sir. Let me see Marshall before you come any closer. together in Denver, isn't it, Jordy? Let's cut the small talk and get to the deal. Small talk's an old man's ever. Now, let's, let's get on with it and get it over. I don't know who you are, but it is over.
kasi Oh boy. There they come, the green guys. Gotta pay the last bill in person. Make sure it's not a big one. I'm coming with you, JJ. Stay here. They want me to. I can feel it. There's no way to resist. Yes, there isn't. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Of course you can resist anything. Let's go, JJ. Start it together. We'll end together. What? what is he? What is he talking about? Where's he going? He's enough, I think, because I really do. Oh, boy. I want to go. Huh? Vehicle violations here to to to, to service a, a traffic division for a whole year. Morning, Ralph. How you doing? Yeah. Well, yeah. well listen, uh, Ralph. What's on your middle level mind, Bill? Uh, I, I hope we're not gonna carry that uh, little joke around too much longer. Okay, Ralph? What's on your mind, Bill? Or what's not? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just... Bill, I feel so good. Have you seen these headlines? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, all that loot going to feed a bunch of guys whose entire life work is sitting in front of a liquor store all day. Yeah, well, it'll be in probate for about five years. But, I mean, we, we did it, Bill. We actually changed something. What is wrong with you? Look, the thing that's bugging me, I can't... I haven't slept for three nights. Um, the thing that I don't... that I don't want to have happen is, um... Uh, Bill, should I take a ticket and sit down? What's on your mind? Come on, spit it out. Okay. When we... croak, finally, do you think that the, uh, you know, the, uh, come on, you know, that they're going to come down and, 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 and snap us up the way they did Beck? You know, but I, I, do you think that we're going to be flying around in the sky with little green guys for forever? Ralph, this is not funny. I think that's terrific, Bill. That's terrific. Huh? I mean, that. I think that would be a wonderful experience. Well, yeah, it's an experience, sure. Uh, and it's uh, uplifting, I'm sure. But I, I, I have this little, uh, you know, conventional need to get buried in the ground at Forest Lawn. Ralph, with a little stone, says, well, here lies the Fed, who busted his acorn trying to do the right thing. You know, he didn't lie, cheat, or steal. He was a good guy. I need... You think that might happen? You think he might come down and, 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 and pick us up and take us away? Ralph, that would, that's a wonderful idea. That's a horrible idea. It's wonderful. It's horrible. It's wonderful. It's horrible. You know it isn't easy. 